My name is Feige Lipman, Feige Schmidt Lipman. I was born July 29th, 1934, uh, an only child. My mother was already a surgical nurse when I was born. My father owned an international bookstore. I had a governess and life was wonderful. June the 21st, 1941, our lives turned upside down. Proclamations came out, orders immediately that all the Jews had to move into a ghetto. Life in the ghetto was bad, but when I think of it now, later on it got a lot worse. There wasn't enough food, you have to find something. My mother, I don't know where she had the strength, I don't know where she had the courage. My mother used to cover her yellow star of David, and my mother used to sneak out. It's unbelievable to, 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 to really think about it. Used to sneak out of the ghetto, through the barbed wires, to wherever she could, and meet some people that knew her from the hospital, and exchange some of our prized possessions with food that she used to bring in. It's, it, it, it's hard to think about it, that she had this much, this much courage. Orders again came out that you had to go with your family on Democracy Square and you're going to be counted. So they will see how many people are still in the ghetto, who, who is working and who is still in the ghetto, to give us more food. Who was my family? My grandfather Ma was, work, was walking with my aunt, my grandmother, my father and me and my mother. And as you walked towards him, he was standing on the mound with a dog, a whip, and white gloves. To this day, I do not own a pair of white gloves. And without rhyme or reason, he divided my grandfather and my aunt to one side, my grandmother, my father and me, and my mother to the other side. Theirs was the bad side. Ours was the good side at that moment. So we were taken to our very first, uh, it was called the Lager. And we were there, and the men used to go out every morning, early, early, early in the morning with my mother, because in case somebody is hurt, to work. And us, young kids and old people, the elderly who couldn't work, remained in that camp, in that Gefangenlager. One day, my mother was waking me early, early in the morning, and she says, I have permission to take you to work with me. And I went with the men in the trucks far away from the labor camp to work at the aerodrome. And we were there a whole day. And I remember very late at night, we were taken back into the ghetto, into, that, into the labor camp, sorry. And I will remember as long as I live what greeted us as we got into that labor camp. I can still in my head, sometimes when it's very quiet, hear the wailing. What happened that day when I was at work with all the men and my mother? Trucks came and collected all the children and all the old people. It was labeled the Kinder Action. And without even knowing, I'm sure the parents knew where those trucks went without even knowing the word Auschwitz. Everybody heard without any communications the word Auschwitz. And later on we found out, the parents found out that they were taken all to Auschwitz. To this day, I do not have one friend from my youth that I was a little girl and my grandmother. At that time, the only family that I had was my father and my mother. My father, with all the men, were taken to Dachau. 
the first concentration camp built. My mother and I were taken to Stutthof, a smaller concentration camp in Poland. And my first recollections, marching in with some other women, because this was a women's camp, into Stutthof. Seeing a big chimney, and maybe I didn't realize what it was. It was smoke was coming, but I didn't realize. But can you imagine the women that knew that this, what this was? And a building that later on we found out that this was a crematorium where bodies were burned. My mother said to me and looked me straight in the eye and said, whatever I do, do not say a word. You have to understand, 1944, July, I was 10 years old. I was a little kid. I was saved from the great action. And I have to tell you, if a ghetto was bad, if labor camps were bad, the concentration camp was a lot worse. In the concentration camp, one day, my mother noticed that I have blotches on my neck and I am burning up with temperature. And I had to go in every concentration camp, had an infirm uh, infirmary where there was a head nurse, naturally not Jewish, usually a German woman, because if you got very sick, you brought in there, you stayed there till the Nazi doctors came on rounds and said who is very, and who, who is very sick and cannot get better and taken out and right away get rid of, and who has to go back to work. Now, this nurse who was in charge at that time in the infirmary, in the, in the Stutthof concentration camp, was saved my life. I remember my mother brought me into the infirmary. I was burning up. I needed a bed. She immediately covered my neck. I don't remember with a scarf or, 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 or with gauze. I don't remember. And I had to go to lie down on a bed. What did she do? You have to understand also. If you helped a Jew in those days, there was no judge, there was no jury, you were shot. And if they knew your family, your family was shot. But this wonderful nurse, lifted with my mother, every day lifted me from bed to bed. The idea was the Nazi doctors that came on rounds would not see me, that I had a communicable disease in a concentration camp. If they would have found out, I would have been taken out immediately and never heard of again. And one day, they picked about a couple of hundred women. I remember a big, big lineup, those who were still able-bodied. And my mother was the first one in line. She was the nurse. And we were taken to the front to dig trenches. And it is documented, and I have the right spelling, Tunsen, Merzen, and Lubitsch, three small camps near the front where we dug trenches and we worked like this till the ground froze over. And I don't remember, it must have been the end of December or January that we still worked. And then what should they do with us when they, we couldn't work anymore? And this was also labeled the death march because we marched in the snow. The death march was a blur. I know we were given to rest in a barn, we were given sometimes to rest in a lean-to, but the snow and the ice was the most unbearable thing, I don't know. I still believe that God was watching. And one day, my mother used to tell my kids that I was pulling her as we were marching, and I said, look, 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 here is a castle. It wasn't a castle, it was abandoned barracks and we were allowed to go in into the barracks. We realized that the guards 
left us. And some of the women who still had strength were opening up those big heavy doors. And when we opened up those doors, we saw a man on a horse. He told us he is a Jewish captain. The Red Army is right near him. We were taken to the Russian zone. And we were there till the end of the war. Survivors are gathering and we will be able to find out if any of our relatives or my father, my, my mother's family survived. And we were given permission, my mother spoke as I said Russian too, we were told to travel at night, so I don't know how much permission we were given from the top to, tra to travel at night, and we got to Lodge. And I have to tell you, this was the worst day of my life. I found out that my mother and I were the only survivors. At that moment, I did not want to live. I lost my very best friend, excuse me, and, but, you look around, sorry, and you see how lucky I was. I had a mother. There were so many orphans. I go now from school to school, from the Simon Wiesenthal Center, from the Holocaust Center, from even the Dominion Institute with all the veterans, they send me and I do not say no. I've been to McMaster, I've been to Western, I've been to whatever, any university, I've been, and I go because we have to speak to young people. We have to tell them what Hitler did. The German people weren't all bad, by the, but they had this horrendous leader that said, if you'll get rid of the Jews, everything is going to be all right with us. And I have to tell them that they have to be nice to each other, that they have to help each other, that look what would have happened to me. And if somebody is in trouble, you should be always there to help them. And my motto is, and somebody recorded even that, if there's hatred in your heart, there's no room for love. 